Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take the global stories that has made it to the front pages of our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers this morning is Chris Kende Wanju. He's a chartered arbitrator. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning to our viewers. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's begin with the punch. And, of course, this was one of our top trending stories this morning with the new agreement um, from Dangote and Eichmann. And this says, this leading story on the punch says, petrol pump price may drop as Dangote marketers sign a deal. The writer here says, marketers to begin loading at refinery, NNPCL, and 24 trillion annual fuel import and patronizes at Dangote. So there's been the whole debacle um, with Dangote and in PCL life man you know downstream midstream whatever it is um, when it comes to having to pick um, um, you know get this commodity but now finally we've reached an agreement and on the punch this morning it says the price may drop me and Yamgo were having a conversation about it and we're like we're not really sure that that would re reflect on the price because Dangote is the only one here is a monopoly he can set it whatever price he wants and maybe it would just be a few a few naira less than a thousand or maybe a bit more but what do you think and what are your expectations from this deal that has been signed do you think it would definitely reflect on the prices and what can we expect I doubt if, if it will reflect on the price of on the price, but I pray so and I hope so. Mm. Uh, but as rightly said, uh, when you have a monopolistic uh, economy or individual or products, that is what happens. Let me refer you back to yesterday. Probably I didn't I, I didn't go to the paper to so I don't know. I think it may be part of some of the papers. Where the price of cement has gone to 8,800 <clears throat> 8, or thereabouts. So, and um, you know who is the you see who is the monopoly in that sector of the market? Mm -hmm. In as much as we have other players, but they are just small players. So, um, until we do the need to make sure that we have our own refinery um, working effectively, then we might just be where we are. Um, because the most annoying part of it is now. Is that then NPC that's supposed to be a competitor to Dangote is not the one going to Dangote to go and buy petroleum products? Is that is that not an irony of it? Mm -hmm. That's a total irony of it. So if we have a refinery in Portacourt, that of in worry, the two in Portacourt, the one in worry, and that of Katima effectively working. They will have some modular refineries there and there. Then the issue of uh, pricing will be just like what happened. During the time of um, the monopoly of um, two key telecom uh, giants, uh, when we started the issue of GSM, and uh, they were making it look as if um, it, that uh, GSM was the second thing that have ever happened to mankind after bread, and that mm -hmm. the price has been pegged, and there's nothing can be done about it until a, a local player came into the market, and the impossible became possible, and then the prices crashed. The prices of SIM, remember in those days we got SIM um, for as much about 35,000 naira. We bought that uh, 3310 mm -hmm. for about almost 60 to 70,000 naira. And then you remember the, the, the Sajem and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the space opened up, and that is what. So, the, whether it man signed an agreement with Dangote or not, the bottom line for me is what is going to be the price of the Trillion product. And we have thought that this was going to be a changer for us because. This is a local refinery, and the crude oil uh, that we are, that is the primary uh, this report it is you now is uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be domiciled in Naira, no longer um, through uh, to the dollars. If you understand what I mean, and we thought that um, those uh, issues relating to the cost of transportation, taxes, and rest of them from imported fuel will be eliminated with that of language effects. What are we seeing? Instead of a decrease, we're having an rise. So I am not too optimistic. But let's just wait and see. But as I said, on the final note, the solution to the problem is getting our own refinery working so that yeah. we can have a healthy uh, competition within the market. And then just have a choice. It's so laughable that yesterday that the, the, the GMD of NNPCL uh, carry was there. Oh, we're no longer importing fuel. We are buying fully from local refinery. And it was so shameful of me. And so he said, 
Uh, we are uh, what is it now? We are saving about two trillion naira on a daily basis, on a monthly basis from that. And I was just saying, you are talking of buying from the local refiner. We are not ashamed to say that. And you can see in the pockets of protests that have been going on in Abuja in the past few days, there are some people have been going to NMPC at like the National Assembly calling for uh, a carry to be removed at NMP, uh, in GMD of NMPC. I totally agree with that. I think he has at least a useful interest and doesn't even know what to do. The other will do a whole thing and just people that are very competent to do the job in the world. So quickly, with our refineries, because you've said that should be the competition, and NNPCL seems to be the one managing um, the refineries. None are working. We have four. None of them are in operation right now, and they've moved the date um, so many times. But do you think at this point we need to look at all the other alternatives, maybe like privatizing the refineries? Is that something that could actually help? Because if for now, um, all we're dependent on is Dangote, our own refineries are not working, which we know will save us a huge amount of money when it comes to, you know, buying this petroleum products because we're refining, refining it ourselves. We obviously have the crude, we're refining it. It would save us a lot more. Do you think maybe now we need to explore other options such as having to privatize these refineries? First and foremost, I would think that we should return the subsidy. First uh -huh. and foremost, you know, put everybody say no, remove subsidy. I still feel that Nigerians need to, uh, the government needs to return subsidy, whatever it takes. Because there is nowhere in the world that you don't see any level of subsidy on products, especially kids, a uh, product like petroleum products, electricity, which is a key energy factor. The problem we are having currently in Nigeria with all the problems we are having within the economy as uh, escalating prices of um, uh, food, uh, service, and, and other um, items is because of the increase. The government holds it a duty for Nigerians to be able to subsidize because what is the essence of government? If you want to alleviate the cause of the uh, problem and solve some of the problems of the citizens. So for me, you know, as much as everybody is saying that, oh, that the, 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 the corruption is subsidy, I still believe that Nigeria needs to benefit we need to benefit from our God-given um, 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 resources. Good oil is spaghetti good oil in Nigeria. And that is the fact. So I, I don't see the reason why that shouldn't be subsidized. So that is one. We're talking about, um, we're talking about the issue of um, privatizing um, the refineries. I neither here nor there for me. Because we've seen what happened to the electric sector. We have privatized NEPA. And those um, those uh, things we are sold to colleagues of those in government. And today we see the problem we are facing the uh, discourse and even Jenkins. So it is a, it's not just privatizing, privatizing to who, for who to be able to manage. I remember BJ that Dangote said he wanted to buy a water court uh, refinery some time ago and he was refused. Uh, but some people are using that to cycle for money. They will not agree for it to be privatized because. If you look at the trillions and trillions of let me put it into trillions and billions of dollars that is being used for ton and half maintenance of these um, uh, refineries in the past, I mean, about 20, 30 years, without refining it, you see that it's a common pipe. So some people will make sure that that does not happen. So mm -hmm. but if we have the political will to do the needful, I would say that we can give it to people who can easily manage it properly. I'm all for it. But if it's privatization, it's just privatization for the sake of it. Just, uh, just like we did with the discourse, and we see what we are suffering today, then I'm not for it. Hmm. Okay, before we leave, Punch, um, minimum wage earners exempt from uh, pay as you end, or the payee, that's according to the tax panel. You, there's been this back and forth, people are for, some are against the new tax regime and all that. It is only now that uh, the government is trying to explain some of the provisions in this tax regime, even when the president has said, no going back, whether we like it or not. But this particular one is saying that the minimum wage earners will be exempt from this tax, uh, according to the, panel, the tax panel. Uh, do you think that is um, one of the things to, to lord this uh, tax regime, the new tax regime, or to a, 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 a good reason to support this new tax regime? For me, the needs, the needs for me is how many states are ready to pay the, the minimum wage? As of today, out of 36 states, I think we're looking at just about 20 or thereabouts. Yeah. And the NLC has been issued um, a warning strike that from the 1st of December, any state that refused to pay the tax, that they will go on strike in that state. And I totally agree with them on that. 
Because when you look at the the, the minimum wage as it were, 70, um, some are paid 71, some are paid 75, and the 70, 80, and the rest of them. There's no reason why any state cannot pay that 70, 70,000 naira minimum wage. Because in the last one year, uh, all the states have received close to about 300% of what they used to receive from FAC. So they have enough money to be able to pay. I am of the school of thought, personally, anyway, my own personal opinion, I've always been that we should decentralize the issue of minimum wage and allow the states to pay what they can pay. That is my, that is always been my own feeling. Uh, we cannot compare my own state of being to Lagos or Rivers or Delta states where my sister comes from, I receive the highest part in Nigeria. They can pay, Delta they can pay as much as 100,000 naira, but if you, from what they get from FAC, they can even do that. I doubt it. So, but that cannot be done now because it's a, a, a constitutional thing. We need to go back to the National Assembly and be able to amend the 99 Constitution as uh, uh, amend the 99 Constitution uh, as amended anyway. So, the fact remains that I believe in the issue of um, the relieving those of uh, uh, paying uh, 70,000 naira from the pay as you know, even the 70,000 naira that is being paid. The price of the price of bag of rice for now has is almost about hundred thousand naira, if not more. So somebody any seventy thousand naira can just cannot even buy a bag of rice. Even if he does buy rice, what of other um, necessities of life? What of uh, yeah, what of uh, the stew to cook the rice? Won't you pay rent? Won't you go to work? So it is a it is a total mess for me. What I I still continue to believe is that we can still better do better than we are doing. The, the level of poverty within the land is so terrible that most Nigerians are, are going hungry. Not just zero zero one now. People are going for days without, without, uh, without being able to uh, eat, and that should be a challenge to the government as well as I'm concerned. So, but taking it forward, as I said, every state, every state in the country should be able to pay that seventy thousand that minimum wage because this is a deal that has been signed. As I might always say on this program, well, as a graduate of law, I know that we call, that's what we call um, a valid contract. And a valid contract is a contract that signed, sale, and delivered. And once it is done, everybody that has a signature to that um, that contract is going to be banned by it. So nobody can say, oh, I don't have the money to get. Go and check the security boots of these governors and see what they take every month. Mm -hmm. Security boots. None of them is doing anything with that with that money. It's just PR money. That money alone can pay the salaries of workers in most of the states. But they just come and ask what they've done with it. So going back to what the question you asked, there's nothing the, um, the those within me know which I don't you know, I don't understand, I've not registered, so I don't even totally understand what they did by the certain status. What categories are you talking of? Uh, those from a level grade level one to four or grade level one to eight or beyond. So, but to me, the bottom line is that every state must start paying that minimum wage. We are talking of the state to our federal government. My brother, don't forget that they have totally forgotten those of us in the private sector. Mm -hmm. Salary, they never, people, people who they work never even think of increasing our own salary. The higher they go put for you now, 5,000 to ask you, you know, just say, don't come to work, they come to work. The private sector is not even tough, it's not at, it's at totally out of the news. And we are, the private sector contributes. Approved about 80% of Nigerian workforce. So, what are we talking about? Hmm. So, you know, just riding off that, on the Vanguard, it leads with value of unsold goods rises to um, 357.6% to 1.2 trillion a naira, and that's according to a man, so the Manufacturing um, you know, Association of Nigeria. The writer here says manufacturers spend 238.3 billion naira on alternative energy sources. Um, it's a recipe for more business closures, higher unemployment, others, and that's according to Nika, um, import ban removal, high local production on cost responsible, according to Asborn, and CanMEP blames decline in consumers' disposal income. So 
of course, you know, riding from the whole minimum wage, people can barely afford anything. And, and we're, seeing, we're seeing the line of poverty deplete. Like, it's like almost everybody's coming into that line right now because even the wealthy people, the middle class, we're all complaining at the moment. But what do you think we need to start okay, doing? You, you are part of the wealthy well, and middle class. No, no. Congratulations. <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> That's the implication. <laughs> See, the wealthy people and the middle class, the we are all, class, co we are all class complaining. Is, okay, I'm you're just class. almost to the middle class, but we're all complaining because we're all in this together. But what do you think we need to be doing? Because if the value of unsold goods are rising to this amount, that means a lot of businesses are even going to close. And we've seen, I think there was a story about so many um, food businesses mm -hmm. that had, you know, gone off, that they had closed shop pretty much. But even with the manufacturing industry and spending so much, on power which is you know having to have an alternative source of power because electricity is not the best at the moment at this point what do you think the government needs to start doing because this definitely is one major source of our revenue and we're seeing people lose so much money and businesses are closing and of course they're not going to get any taxes from that maybe by saying that um, your initial notion of the middle class and the upper class <laughs> There's no longer middle class. There's nothing like middle class in Nigeria. No middle class anymore. The middle class has been totally... Uh, At this point, I'm so poor. Then. No, no, there's no middle class anymore. No, no, there's no middle class. What we have is upper class and lower class. Where you, uh, you can be within the upper class. I'm in the lower class. class. I, know, I, I know my class. <laughs> <laughs> I know my class. I know where I am. I'm in the lower <laughs> class. <laughs> Guy, my guy, you know where we're doing now. Are you bro? No, I, I have no class. I'm repeating class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm repeating class. So, oh, uh, yeah. So, but the part of the, the part you have to be what it is because the goods that are being produced, people cannot afford it. Mm. And what we need to the goods just remain it. And I've said it time and time again. Okay, there is only one basic problem we need to solve as quickly as possible, and you have to also have to do with energy. If we can solve the issue of energy, which is our that of power, then every practically every other thing within the system, the value chain, everything will change completely. But we solve the problem within our energy sector. And when we talk about the energy sector, we're talking of both the electricity and petrol. That is energy. It will mm. to be able to solve that. Because look at it from the point of even those manufacturers are finding it difficult to buy diesel. This is close to about one. I, I can't remember. I don't even know how much this is. It's is. over a thousand two hundred. Yeah. It should be far, far more than even more than um, petroleum product. Petroleum is over one thousand naira. The power is not there. The national grid is collapsing like a pack of cards <laughs> for the daily basis. <gasps> so you can't even have that. You are talking about alternative power. Go and try to put solar. Go and try to buy a little solar and put it in your house and know how much it costs. You can't get a very good one, very good one that can take certain things for less than one million naira. How many people can afford that in Nigeria? So it is a problem. And that is why someone said someone said that the rush the shuffling that the president didn't send didn't make any sense to like this. If you have somebody that's minister of power and that is practically done what in the past 18 years and still left him to be bumbling and bumbling like Pani Amu said during the 2017 um world championship years back, then we're in trouble. We are a country of over 200 million, and I continue to say it on the program. He is one player and one, one million probably with just 4,000 megawatts of power. 200, do the mass, share it, divide it, and see what comes to you. Now they have gone into putting us under a uh, uh, quote and unquote, uh, to my, my choice of work, a banditry bandit, on bands. As they call it, we <laughs> put on the sun, we buy band A, band B, band C, and band C. At the end, they put nothing. And rubber band. <laughs> yeah, the band, we talk about bandless. People like me are bandless. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, yes, now, so my bandless now. Mm. So, at the end of it, so you come to realize that we are just for shit. And the government is telling you, oh, things are better. It's very rosy. Nigeria is in this, you're in Eldorado. You are in the right, the right part to this. And it, it will get worse because the land can continue to act. It will get worse before it gets worse. So must read that before it gets better. If the sacrifice was like John the Baptist, uh, and John the Baptist, then when would the Jesus come? That is the problem of Nigeria. I just have this feeling and believe that our leaders will lack vision. They know mm. next to nothing. What happens in this country is that people just struggle for power. Struggle for power, get the power, and they don't know what to do with it. Others plan. 
The new president of um, um, the elected president of um, United States, Donald Trump, he won't take over to January. But as of today, he has already planned. You see what he is writing? His chief of staff is ready. Other key um, 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 people, he's already putting them in place. Mm. By the time he takes over from Joe Biden on the twat, uh, uh, in January, he has hit the ground running. Tomorrow, he'll be meeting the current president to be able to grab mind. He want to see what has been done, what he has done, what has got done, what is left to be done. And he'll be brief. That is how countries work. But not ours. Ours of people are just interested that, oh, it is my turn. Uh, I need to get power <laughs> as well. As, as. And you give them their power with all the school preparation that they say they prepare. Nothing happens. So, back to the question, the fact remains that those who are service, because the cost of production is so high, dollar is hitting about 1,700. And if we are not careful, by the end of December 31st, 2024, that dollar will hit 2,000. That is where it's heading to. Hmm. And just about 18 weeks ago, dollar was just about 700, uh, 700 now. We're even carrying on that worry that it got too high, not knowing that we are going to have something that is going to be worse. So those are the situations on we deal with the issue of um, um, energy so well, that in itself will trickle down across all value chain. And Nigeria cannot be able to afford the afford to be able to buy things. Then most of those majority of products, nobody's going to buy them. Hmm. In those days, you see that you go to the market or the supermarket, you may buy in you know that 100 naira meal. We can just buy maybe about 12. Uh, Chris, 12. Chris, at this point, you are you are jealous of the president, just like Atiku <laughs> is, or B is, and yeah, every other person. You are part of the opposition. Mm. You are jealous of yeah. the president mm. the, because the policies are so the, good. That's, that's how they classify you. Mm -hmm. The policies are. The man says, I'm not jealous. The man is a billionaire. How can I be jealous? <laughs> After all, I was vice president before. We need to have never been a president. We need to go there. It's laughable, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. But, but just hopeful that um, you know whatever policies because now if we cannot buy anything we cannot fill our tanks with fuel we cannot buy electricity I, I, I wonder what they want from us at this point and, and I keep asking what does Nigeria pray. want from we can buy prayer we can buy prayer we can buy prayer you know they are, we are planning to pray start praying again that's mm -hmm. all we know how to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris, this is where we have to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always, always a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you for your time. I like that word. Always, always, always. <laughs> Double. Calm down. <laughs> have a wonderful day, Chris. <laughs> have a wonderful day. Thank you, sir. All right, so I'm speaking with Chris Kende Wande. He's a chartered arbitrator. And we've just been looking at the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be discussing our first hot topic, which talks about 36 states' debt that is re risen um, to 11 trillion naira despite IGRs and FAC allocations. Please stay with us. <laughs>